Okay. The board, uh, board of Selectmen meeting November 27th, 2023, 6 p.m. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Two four dash one one. Motion to approve the minutes of the commission meeting October 16th, 2023, and October 30th, 2023. All in favor? Aye. 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 Is there anybody give public session? Uh, question just from Lincoln Road. And I'm here on behalf of Barbara from the Council on Aging. And uh, I prepared like a little sheet for you so you could follow along with what I'm saying verbally. And that is Barbara um, found that there's 151 seniors that are 75 and over in Oakland and qualify for the program of getting a gift card to Hannaford Supermarket for Christmas. She calculated the cost and the cost was uh, $4,530. So she wanted to run it by the selectum to see how comfortable they felt with that since it would be coming out of the Alden Trust. And then we have a couple of other alternatives depending upon your level of comfort. If you were uncomfortable with $4,530, we would go perhaps for a gift card of $25 which is 3,775. And if you still felt uncomfortable, then a gift card $20 for $3,020. So she wanted to run this by you first, to see how comfortable you felt before she uh, spoke to Hanford. What did we spend last year? I don't know. I think it was a $30 gift card last year, yeah. Lucy, do you uh, remember what we spent last year? Yes, it was $30 per person. Okay. Um, I, I'm supportive of it. Do, you, do we know how much we have in the Alden Trust? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we previously approved um, funding it. Um, from the Alden Trust, but we didn't have a dollar amount. So I, I would move that we um, approve uh, $4,530 um, from the Alden Trust to be used for the 151 seniors for a gift card to Hanover's. A second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Right. Okay, great. Thank you. Now, the second point is, because it is so much money, um, what Barbara is going to talk to Hannaford about is giving her an invoice so we could submit the invoice for payment. Uh, so I just wanted to make bring that out. And the other question I have is, Maribel, um, if they ask for purchase order, mm -hmm. so they can invoice against the purchase order, do we come to you? I we have it. Oh, God, that's beautiful. So if you need it, yeah. Okay, okay, so um, that's the invoice for the gift cards. Okay, so could you, like, email it to yeah. me? Okay, and then I'll give it to Barbara. So it's just very standard, and then they yeah. can fill it in, but I'll send it to you in a board document so you can fill it in. And... 
That would be perfect. And then usually that's a business's invoice against the purchase order. So perfect. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I have one thing for the Council of Aging. This is Steve Dollinger here from 157 Robinson Road. Sorry, I wasn't able to attend. I just had gotten back from my trip here. So I had asked the Council of Aging if they wanted a laptop or a desktop that I was going to yeah. donate to them. I still haven't gotten any kind of response, and I hope you guys still love me. <laughs> we love you, Steve. We're gonna love you even more when you say yes to what I ask you. Okay. Well, whatever, whatever you. That's what I'm. You saying. can make and it a Merry I, Christmas I would, for us. <laughs> yes, and that's what I want to do. So, um, from not just for myself, but for my family. You know, me and my wife have talked about it. And we want to donate a piece of equipment to you guys. I just need to know: Do you want a desktop or a laptop? And I can get you something that's really good, and we can get the CM geeks to help you out with it, hopefully, and get it all set up. Um, you know, Steve, uh, there were some concerns raised about a laptop that it might be easy to steal. Okay. And so I suggested a laptop with a docking station. Is that possible? That is. And we can make sure that it has a lock and you can lock yeah. it against yeah. some type of piece of equipment. It's up yeah. to you. That would be perfect. So we had all felt better with a laptop because it's portable with a docking station that locks. All right. Sounds good. I will... Uh, get that going and hopefully we can get it before the end of the year and can present it at hopefully the next board of selectmen meeting or the one after that. So that's perfect. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Steve. I'm all done. Thank you. Anytime. Thank you. Hi. Lucille DeLeo, 325 East Hill Road East. Um, I did send out a courtesy email to all select people yesterday regarding the issue that I'm going to raise right now so that you have a little time to prepare for it if you needed to. But I wasn't present for the November 13th meeting, but I did review the YouTube. And what I heard was that there's this question about whether or not the town should be plowing Sky Drive. And I understand through the grapevine that there's some kind of controversy about that particular piece of real property in the town. And I don't know whether or not the town owns that street or drive or the residents own that or the developer owns that. So that I need a little clarification on before I can proceed. We need that clarification also, but just to let you know, it started back in February. And we've been working with town council and the contractors council. Evidently some of the dates were not Recorded properly. They weren't drafted properly? You know, something wrong with the deeds that some houses own part of the street. Okay. So they're, they're working that out now. But in the meantime, we have found that in 1963, <clears throat> the meeting in March, we adopted chapter 40, section 6 c to d that was an article in the town warrant and the town was presented with it and they voted on it. I don't think you can take an article from a previous town meeting and say, we're going to go back now from 2023 to, 20, to 1963 and apply it. Because if that were the case, then why wouldn't you just adopt every other article that has been approved by every town meeting over the course of these years? So you're telling me that if we adopted a law in 1970, it wasn't a law. It, it's, huh? it's not a law. It's an article. It was approved. The state law. Yes, you can adopt that state law, right. but you can't apply it without appropriating X number of dollars to it. And that's the big problem is you don't know how much it you're going to need, first of all. And the other thing is, is you're going to be setting some precedent by plowing some per, someone's personal land, as you said, some of this part of the street there owns is owned by the people that live there. Well, if you agree now to plow that at the town's expense, what about any other person in town that is on a private road how could you deny them the request to plow their private road? Good point. And, you, we have, and we have been plowing those private roads because of that law. At our expense. Well, it shouldn't continue that way. 
I mean, there are mistakes that are made, but mistakes can be corrected. I'm concerned that you're going to be setting some precedent with this particular piece of property. Kevin has been here 30 years. Kevin has plowed these private roads down by the lake for 30 years. At our years. expense. Well, why don't I have to drive, plow my driveway? These aren't driveways. These are roads getting to the property. These are the roads. These, These are roads that are not adopted by the town. Exactly. Yeah, but they still, don't belong the to the reason. town. You got ambulances in there. You got to get the police in there. You got to get the fire department in there. You need those roads open for safety reasons. I understand that, but the problem I'm seeing right now with this sky drive is that what if you start doing this? Why are they even going to try to correct the deeds? They have no incentive to. Mm -hmm. And then, are you going to fix their property? You're going to plow it, but then are you going to fix it? If there is the bad conditions on that road of their property, is the town then going to have to pay to repair any damage that's done to that property as a result of heaves in the road that get bumped up and pulled up by a plow? Right. I mean, it just stinks. <laughs> I, I, believe that we shouldn't be doing this. And I believe that the town is not responsible for deeds that were not drafted correctly and people bought the property. Buyer beware when you buy real estate. Buyer beware. Absolutely. You do your own work. Don't come back how many years later and say, well, you have to fix this for us because you're plowing other people or we're going to sue you if you don't plow this. Well, that raises another issue for me. And I know I'm going off on tangents, but I don't know what kind of cause of action they would even have. Who are they going to sue and for what? Well, they can't sue us. We don't own the property. Well, I don't know the threats of a lawsuit. <coughs> First of all, no one has threatened us with a lawsuit. Okay. This well, it was for the grapevine. <clears throat> grapevine is one thing. And you yeah. don't know what that means. I don't know. I don't, you know, there are no minutes that I can look at. There's nothing that I can read. There's so, no grapevine because we have not been. You haven't been threatened? We have not been threatened with a lawsuit. Our we planning nothing, board has not been threatened with a lawsuit? No. Yeah. So then why are we doing this? Why, all, why, why did this all start in it February? It all started back in February when the contractor said he was no longer going to plow it. But that's between the people that own it and the contractor. That right. doesn't involve us. Right. And we tried to stay out of it as much as possible. Okay. And? and that's why we turned it over to town council. Originally, they wanted us to adopt the, these roads that are down there, two of them, down there. And there's a process you have to go through for that. I'm aware of that. Right. So there was no way that was going to be on the special town meeting. We have winter coming up. Who has been found before? The contractor? The contractor. And just because the contractor says, I'm not doing it anymore. Our tax dollars are going to now pay for that man that said no? Well, we adopted the law to allow us to do it. That allows you to do it, but you have to come up with X number of dollars. You can't just present a warrant without a dollar amount. Because the people that pay our taxes need to know how they're spending their, how you're spending their money. How much is it going to cost to do this this coming winter? There's a line item in the highway budget. It clearly states snow and ice. You've already funded it. Snow and ice. But why are we hiring a, a private contractor to do that work on that road? Because the highway superintendent wanted to. Instead of using his people so that they can maintain the rest of the roads. And it's not unusual to hire contractors to, I understand. to plow roads. Yeah. And so it's, it, he just doesn't have the resources. I think he said it would take X number of additional hours that he had planned on. Um, and I mean, my observation is these taxpayers are paying taxes. Um, and so it's not like we're giving them something that they're not entitled to. Um, unfortunately, the developer 20 years ago, um, 15 years ago, the last 10, you know, last 20 years hasn't followed through with what should have been done. Um, but we're not giving them anything for free. Um, everybody should be able to have access to fire, EMS, police, 
Um, and because um, because of that, these residents are are going to potentially lose out on services that they're entitled to. So I don't feel like we're giving them anything that they don't deserve. Those people don't deserve. The residents certainly deserve our services. Um, and since we have the authority to do it, I think it's right to do, but I, I, we did talk about the condition of the roads prior to acceptance. Um, and so there would be a review of the roads as um, issues with access to the fire pond that we, or um, the standpipe um, that would need to be addressed prior to the planning board's recommendation to take the property or take the, the roads. Um, but there may be um, a benefit to having some kind of hold harmless um, if we can um, prior to um, providing um, this service. McKibben did mention that he wanted to evaluate the roads before he did anything. Mm -hmm. Before you plow it? Right. He wants to know the condition of that road before he goes down there. We, we told him, go ahead, check it out. But is his decision of whether or not the road is acceptable to him causing you then say, okay, we're gonna do it? If he says there's no issues down there, yeah. But don't you believe that we should know how much it's going to cost and get that in front of the special town meeting for the appropriation of X number of dollars? Well, there's money in the budget today to pay for the services that are being requested or that we're offering. So it's not, there's money in the budget to, to cover it. Um, so it's not, I mean, it is an added expense, but yeah. the, the line item is is budgeted yeah. for, for plowing. <coughs> for plowing streets that are owned by the town. Or, or that we're allowed to, I mean, we have the ability to, to plow private ways um, according to this 1963 adoption. And that's what town council said originally is have you accepted this particular um, mass general law? Um, and if you had, then you could go ahead and plow it. So town council did provide input um, that basically said, you can't if you don't have this. If you have that, then you can. But what about the dollar amount? I know you said it's budgeted, but we don't know what kind of weather we're gonna be facing this winter we and never, how much money that you have did. already budgeted for snow removal. And that's why the law allows us the deficit spend on snow and ice only. Allows you to do what? Deficit spend. From where? Well, it'll come, eventually we'll come out of free cash next year. But we have a $200,000 budget for snow and ice and we spend 300,000. That 100,000 is coming out of our free cash next year. Just like with the ice storm, that wasn't budgeted. That's finance law, that's not us. I still believe we should have a dollar amount fixed for that. And if we go beyond that dollar amount, then it's up to the people that live there to plow. Well, that's not the way the law is written. If, if it requires a transfer next year from free cash to cover a deficit that accumulates now because we extended beyond our owned roads, then we're still paying for it out of free cash. That's the only law that the state allows deficit spending on. Right. But the you only one. It's because what you just said, we don't know what it's gonna cost. We have nine major storms. Bottom line, we're spending our money for right. someone who doesn't have anything to do with the town except developed a parcel of property in it. And it's saying, I'm not gonna follow my responsibilities any longer. So here you go, you guys pay for it. And we are. What's the alternative? Say no. What's the alternative? The alternative, build with people. If you go into a deficit and the amount is caused by the amount we have to pay to a contractor <clears throat> to do their property, if you go way above and beyond your 200,000 is budgeted, then they have to pay their share. 
I don't think we should be paying their share. I don't think there's a mechanism for us to bill other than taxes. An, assess an, an assessment, an article, and a warrant. We will do this, but if there is a deficit caused by having to plow your property, because you don't want to plow your own property at your expense, then we can come and, and assess your property for that bill. But they are already paying for it through taxes. Don't use these to work. I mean, you know, they are paying for it like everybody else. No, they're paying for what they bought. Right. But they're paying taxes at the same rate we all do, which includes, you know, money for road maintenance and plowing and all of that. I mean, we're, we're you're, sympathetic you're assuming on the planning somebody's board. mistake is what you're doing. Right. You're it's, asking it's, the town to assume somebody's mistake. That's true. It's wrong. It's a wrong precedent. Wrong. The end goal is to get the roads adopted by the town. Yes. And that way we increase our chapter 90 money from the state. Fine. But it can't happen before the first snowstorm. Right. Even, I mean, we've already had a snowstorm. Um, so in order to ensure that those roads are safe for our residents. Um, we have to allow it now with the expectation that they continue to work on it. And they are working on it. I mean, town council has given them all the instructions of what needs to get done. Um, and we've been told through the planning board that they're working on it. Um, so, uh, I mean, I, I think next winter, uh, if they haven't done anything, I think we have an, an option to say, no more. Um, but for this winter, if they're actively working on it, I, I feel to the residents, um, it's only fair that we not penalize them for the um, developers um, issues. We're not penalizing anybody. They have, they bought the property. They did their due diligence and it is buyer beware when it comes to real property. If they messed up somewhere, I hate assuming somebody's mistake. I, I'm, I'm going to suggest when's the end, when's the deadline for warrants for this next special town meeting? That's right. That's right. So you can't even how I don't even know how you could even enforce if they don't do what they're supposed to do and next winter comes around. What 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 do you have? You already set the precedent to do it. How can then you turn around and say no? We're not going to do it. Because you didn't do what you were supposed to do. I, I mean, what I just said is, in light of the fact that they have made actual attempts and progress for the 23-24 winter, I support plowing it. That's it. 23-24 winter. Um, and so, I mean, I think that's clear that because of these actions, this is the effect. Um, it doesn't assume uh, an expectation for the 24-25 winter. I think you need that in writing because you're dealing with real property. And you're asking them to do something that they have no contractual obligation to follow. So the town needs a contract with these landowners telling them that it's for this year only. Will I get a response? Will you get a response? Yes. Absolutely. Okay. I just want to go on record. It. I totally oppose this until you do. As you're saying now, we're going to do it this year, but you need a contract. Oh, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll keep you up to date on it. Thanks. Okay. The meets and bounds have been that. Uh, Brad Taylor, East Hill Road. The meets and bounds have been established over there, as far as I know. What what exactly does that mean? How could they not be put in if the town, if the <clears throat> property owners own part of the road? It's a legal document. It's registered down at the 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 uh, the deed where the deeds are, so that 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 couldn't have been done if the people own part of the road. I'm I'm. Still amazed that that ever happened, and town council is telling you something. Even even Phil Warbass said 
They don't own it. The property owners do not own part of the road. I can only tell you for- I, I understand that, but the meets and bounds are a legal document. Those things have been installed by the, by the, uh, the developer. I'm well aware of that. So how could that not be correct? So what's the solution? And even even if a new town council, even if um, the homeowners don't own, even if they don't own part of the road, the developer owns the road then, and that still needs to be addressed. That makes the matter a, lot a little easier. bit easier. Yeah, they're makes not it, uh, only one meeting away, really. It, it, I mean, but that person that attorney was, needs that to, was the case. Why has the developer all of a sudden decided not to plow the road that he owns? He said he said enough. Oh, I understand. I, hey, you know what? I dump it in his lap. That's what I do. <clears throat> He's the one that could get sued. But exactly. I'm more concerned that the road doesn't get plowed. Someone has a heart attack down at that cul de sac, and we yeah. can't get an ambulance in there. Well, that's true. Would that be a lawsuit? Oh, I would imagine it would all come back to who's responsible for plowing. Wouldn't be us. And who's responsible for public safety? We are. It's a vicious circle. It's a private way. I get so, it. So, I get it. So, wait, are you? I'm going to take that a little bit farther. Good. What if I don't plow my driveway and I have a heart attack because the ambulance can't get to me? Mm -hmm. Is that the town's responsibility? Is your driveway open to the public? Well, they can drive on it. It's my personal the, property, the, but it's my personal property right. as the personal property is on Skyline Drive. Skyline Drive is speeding more than one house. But you still have to get over, you have to trespass over somebody's property. I don't think it's the same. Where is the difference? You're driving your driveway somebody. versus an actual road that goes into a subdivision with 15 houses. That's not you're going to tell me that's, that's the not same. All owned. It's, not it's, the same. it's someone's personal property. It's not. The I same. mean, they're real property, not personal property. I agree with you to a point. I agree. I would like to see the contract that we're we are obligating the town for this year only. I can agree with that. Yep. I agree with that fully. Yeah, I mean, I, I was, um, I, I, the first meeting I think this came up with, I said, this is, the town has done everything it had to do. Um, and um, why are we responsible? Um, <coughs> but they made progress. Um, and it's not like they just put up their hands and said, well, you can take it and we're not going to go through the process going forward. Um, I think they're making efforts. Uh, and, and again, because it's the citizens of this town, I think we need to advocate um, for those citizens and maybe, you know, with a contract, they can agree um, that they will, uh, they understand that it's only for this year. Um, so I'm just chatting. I'm Don't forget, they're asking us to adopt the roads as public ways at a town meeting. There's no way that can all get done by January right. for the special, but it would be done by May for the annual. Yeah, you follow the timeline. Yeah. You know, that will be done. It's just right if, now. If, we're our, between a if rock Kevin and says that it's suitable. Yeah, so what I'm saying, it snows tonight. What do we do? Oh, you're going to plow it. Absolutely. But if, if, if it wasn't the next year, <laughs> if it wasn't plowed and one of our trucks is going down there for life, um, to protect life and get stuck, and then where OCAM is without one of its vehicles because it wasn't plowed, our our streets are plowed very well. Uh, I and, have no problem and, with that at all. And, and so I would much rather ensure that the rest of us are going to have access to a piece of fire or police equipment um, on roads that we're ensuring are being taken care of um, and, and not getting stuck somewhere. Um, so I, I understand where you're coming from. It's not a a good precedent, especially if someone is saying, well, it's in your lap, um, but I don't feel like they've said it's in your lap. I, I think it's just been a, there's not enough time for 
them to finish their piece for it to go to the planning board for a planning board to bring it back to us so that can go on the um, annual town meeting to be accepted or considered um, at an annual town meeting. Barbara Piucci, East Hill Road East. And this is just a curiosity question. Why has it taken so long for this to resolve itself? Why has been, there been so much from February to now? Why did it take so long for this 1963 article to surface? What was that in October? When you just said the town pay, um, does this for other private roads. Why is there all been all of this commotion for all of these months? The contractor's attorney never got back to the town council after numerous, numerous calls and emails. Okay. So that's why nothing was progressing. It should have been done in March. <clears throat> why didn't it come up in March? But how is it, again, that this thing from 1963 just surfaced a month ago? And um, that was the whole res that became the whole resolution to all of this mess. Right because the superintendent found that in his road. You just told us the superintendent has been plowing private roads for 30 That's years. Right. So why did he have to find that? Why didn't he just know that because and bring this up The superintendent before him plowed those roads and he just took right over and figured we could do that. So somebody sat somewhere and read, started reading from like what year to find that? I'm just curious, why did this take so long? You'd have to ask Kevin Curry, I have no idea. This was in his files in his office. But, but this is also part of the problem that we've had other bylaws be found. Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, not a bylaw. Excuse me. well, other bylaws. So, but it was accepted. And, and so there should be a permanent record of that acceptance somewhere. Um, but we have had bylaws not show up in our, you go on the website and look up your bylaws. Mm -hmm. um, so we, I feel like we need a, a review of as far back as we can find looking at those town meeting reports because who knows what else is in there that we don't have because there could be something after 1963 that changes this it's just it's just that i just out of curiosity needed to ask why is why did this just come up it was fine and this is now all the all of a sudden the answer to this whole thing kevin did a search of his records and that's what he found okay didn't know we had so there could be other stuff we don't know about, right? In the absence of this, it wouldn't have been plowed. Right, right. We, we know nothing about this. Which actually doesn't help the situation either. No. Is there, Maybe. I'm sorry, Ken House on uh, 25 S and Road. Uh, is there any way to put pressure on the town council to complete this contract and get the town to accept the road? Is there some way that we as a town can put pressure on the contractor to do this? Well, Tom, yeah. Or do we have to bring a lawsuit against him? We're, we're, there's no lawsuit from us. Uh, well, <clears throat> but back in June, there was clear instructions on what they had to do. Right. Yes. And yeah. so um, we're not waiting on town council to advise anything. They know what they have to do. Um, so there's a resurrection of a, a defunct corporation, I believe. Right. Um, so that needs to happen. They have to pay to, to do all of that. Mm -hmm. um, so they're in, their lawyers in process uh, is my understanding to um, get that all back so they can then turn over the the property. Yeah, Tom, you still wrote, we, I'm on the planning board and uh, we've had some conversations with the contractor and the previous owner. And they have been working fairly diligently over the last month to get this moved along. There's, I think there's one resident that hasn't signed this transfer of paperwork. I think it's hung up with one person at this point. So we assume once that's done, it will proceed to the next step where they'll present all that information to the selectmen, and then the selectmen will, will transfer it to the planning board. At that point, we have a specific process we go through, which is to check all of the, the boundaries and the roads and the drainage and all of that. So there's a specific uh, criteria per 40A on subdivision control that we will follow. But they are working on it. It's not, you know, and we 
are all kind of a thorn in their side, even though that's not the way it's supposed to work. Right. But we have been pushing them along. We don't want to see this drag on for my expectation that, you know, six months it should be done, I would think. That'd be my guess. Yeah. Yeah. Through the chair. Um, and my understanding is we can say we uh, would recommend acceptance if you do this, this, and that. So if there's damage to the road, they can be expected to repair said damages. Well, we have the ability to hire a person to overlook the whole project. You know, we do that in some cases, depending how complicated they are. Who pays for that? They do. Okay. Yeah, it's not, it doesn't cost the town any money. But we, we're, it's in pretty good shape. I mean, the, the bounds are already in. There is some minor cracking on the road, which we think could be repaired just with a liquid type repair. So it's not a, I don't see, I see a major problem with the road. The drainage is fine. There's an issue on uh, maybe cutting some trees in around the, the drainage pond, but I don't think that's been addressed yet. So there's a few items, but it's not that far off. I don't, I think it will happen. Yep. Lucy, did you have anything? No, I know it's a confusing issue, but um, eventually they are going to get filed one way or another. No, thank you. Anyone else for public? Right, Dan Lee still wrote. <clears throat> I would like to uh, get on the agenda for next meeting if I could for that issue with the uh, fire chief. Yep. Okay. December 11th. Thank you. One more thing, please. Um, Barbara Q. G. East Hill Road. On the um, meeting, meeting minutes, there are some from, there's one from August 7th is the last, and then there's one from October 2nd, I think it is. So there's a whole bunch of them missing. When can we expect to see those? Next, uh, the next meeting, we'll have them for approval. Second one you said October. Um, yeah, it's early October. August twenty first. Oh, October. No, there's an October seventh. Um, no, there's an August seventh, and then there's nothing until an October, um, October second. Second. Right. Okay. So all of September, October, rest of October um, is missing. Okay. And then of course November will be due next month. All right. Thank you. Box and Rec Committee. Yeah. Yeah. We got stuff here too. I, still I, mean, I actually have to leave about 10 minutes. So, sorry. I thought it'd be. It's awesome. okay. We just had, we have been made aware that. Make your name. Sorry, but... Stephanie Smith, 308 New Bermuda Road. Um, at our last Parks and Rec meeting, we were made aware that there was a request. Parks and Rec to consider taking over right field and the town comment, and we just need more information before we can make any sort of vote on that. So my um, uh, observation through the years is that the Board of Selectmen tends to be left to decide things like where to place a reading um, thing around the town, um, and it's really not the Board of Selectmen's expertise. Um, to be deciding how to use um, uh, land that's used for recreational purposes. And uh, I feel as though the committees, boards that are most engaged in an area should be empowered um, and authorized to make recommendations for funding, for utilization, uh, rather than a, a board of selectmen who really isn't in the middle of any of that, um, except that it's right now the only one that it's left with. Um, I mean, I've asked questions like who's responsible for changing the light bulbs on the common and there really isn't anybody, uh, but the highway department did. Um, and so it's for me, it was about empowering the, the volunteers who are most um, uh, interested um, in um, their uh, parks and rec and um, uh, there's the recreation, but what about the parks? So we have two town-owned 
uh, pieces of property uh, that I just felt as though um, get underserved, undercared for, unless somebody makes a stink about it. Um, they don't get um, identified funding because no one's thinking about it. And so it's an opportunity to um, uh, empower uh, volunteers to uh, make it a priority, ask for funding at town meeting so that we're not um, uh, having the field um, crumble, which, you know, last year, a lot of work was put in um, by a volunteer this year, a volunteer did the labor, uh, an anonymous um, volunteer did the labor. Um, so that was the rationale for uh, suggesting that um, the a volunteer committee be uh, empowered. Did you have any? Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Sorry. And any sort of itemized list of what, like you mentioned, the light bulbs in the um, lampposts. Like any what? Because I think what we don't understand yet is what what tasks. You know, like <laughs> are we talking about maintenance, upkeep? Or are we just talking about who's the contact person for events going on there, or anything like that? Because there's a whole slew of possibilities that we were discussing at our meeting, and we just we we would need more. Interest. So one example would be it wouldn't be the board. In my opinion, it wouldn't be the board of selectmen approving placement uh -huh. of things around the right, right, right. the field. Yes. Yeah. Um, it would be the parks and rec. Um, if a, a group wanted to hold an activity, it would be parks and rec that would consider that, um, assuming it fell within a policy that we have. Right. Um, no maintenance then, it sounds like. Well, I, I think um, budgeting maintenance would be great uh -huh. um, because right now it doesn't have a line item uh, as far as I'm aware, for any upkeep. May I speak? Mayor Bellarange, I'm also on Parks and Rec. Um, and at our meeting, we discussed that if Parks and Rec did take over uh, the ball field and the gazebo, that a line item would need to be created for funding. I think, like, landscaping around the gazebo, I think it's so pretty, but it definitely lacks that attention and care. Um, and I know Parks and Rec currently has a budget, but we can't make it all work with the $5,000 that's already budgeted just for the seasonal stuff that Parks and Rec does and take over that. Um, so I know that we did discuss additional funding if we did. And it wouldn't be to change the light bulbs or to mow the lawn. Mm -hmm. It would be to hire contractors mm -hmm. to do that mm -hmm. um, labor. Right. So hire contractors, meaning not part of the town already existing. Because don't they currently mow the fields and the common? Yeah. yeah. But if you're looking for landscape, adding vegetation or shrubbery, that would not be in their scope. Yeah, the highway department currently just does mows. Yeah. Who does the landscaping there if there is anyone that, like, who planted the bushes or would it was they just part of the it? anniversary, wasn't it? Okay. So, like, basically, nobody has gone in to prune those things because nobody's mm -hmm. in charge of doing so. I see. Yeah. I don't think we're, I mean, just the general feeling of the group at the last meeting, I don't think we're opposed to taking over some of the planning of it, but it is a small team of volunteers that are already stretched very thin. So but, we're going to have to be very careful in discussion with what exactly this entails and have to be a vote with the whole group. I think there's always, always a risk that nobody is going to be on the Parks and Rec Committee. So it would have to be, there'd have to be a backup plan of some sort. <laughs> well, I mean, I can I can <laughs> say that <laughs> certainly there's not been a shortage of um, social media warriors um, talking about you know the deficits. So maybe there's opportunity for them to get involved to Someone champion. To try that. Um, <laughs> and, yeah, we've struggled um, more and more as as different things. You know, again, things are busy and everybody has stuff going on there's a, a decrease in volunteers for various town things. Um, I think every group feels it. Um, so we're just being a little bit cautious on what does this mean? <laughs> but if you look at other towns, parks and rec, I mean, that is, it, it falls within their, their scope. And now other towns probably have a parks and rec coordinator, assistant, um, but that might be something down the road that you're advocating. Um, for funding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think we mainly were just wondering if there was any sort of itemized list the select board had if, in regards to or even because we even came across an electrical problem last year mm -hmm. on the on the ball field and when we were doing October fast. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So and even the last renovation of this, we ended up getting a bill from it from our own people. So <laughs> you know, we were able to cover that because OCAM New Brain Tree or our league had funds left over that we were able to use for it. But I mean, if we're going to be responsible for it, that stuff can't happen. Somebody volunteers their time and then sends us a bill that we do nothing about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no. That was a process issue. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. Okay. Well, I, I think I'll, I'll um, yeah, maybe try and reach out to some other towns locally and see what their parks and rec department even looks like, because maybe that would give us a better sense of what types of tasks other people are taking on and if we could and then my only other concern was for the town common um would that if parks and rec took it over would that would they be the ones scheduling any events that would happen or does that still have to go through the town because i know like right now with the bandstand that's always can be that yeah that. so there's like a lot of but you know i don't know if they're fully involved or they're kind of just making their way through. Um, so there's just a few gray areas that would need to be, I think. Could we get a list of just the town properties that are potentially- Just those any, two. Oh, I thought you said there were two other fields or properties. Or no, the, just the right and the common. Okay. I know we had heard at one point there was some other- Has there a tent or something? Oh, something that 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 well, well, nobody's <laughs> doing anything about it, I'm sure. <laughs> No, and it was a question lodged to Parks and Rec, and that's, you know, we're all, we've only been on the Parks and Rec committee, all of us, for what, two years? Three years now? Mm -hmm. So there's so much that we don't even know that's been lost over the years with various volunteers. You know, so it's been a very loose committee. <laughs> so that would help. Talking about it. <laughs> One thing that I think does need to get done, um, and there's plenty of plywood from like some kind of arts festival or something up on the third floor, um, but covering that opening so that animals don't move in for the winter. Yeah, we can definitely board that up. Um, it's the snack shack. Oh, oh, right oh, gotcha. So we did a loose. <clears throat> just try to touch point to see if there was any interest in getting a snack shack back up and running last year and really there was none um so we might consider potentially taking that away um again one of our great unknowns is who owned it it was donated. town property so it was our understanding is it was donated years ago by a town's person and there's special rules that apply to right field what can and cannot be um and all that kind of stuff. If the town knows anything about that, would be no very helpful. structures. That's right. Because <laughs> <fun there. laughs> I mean, <clears throat> Parks and Rec needs to pay to have it removed and disposed of. Is that something that we can approach the town for? I mean, you're not the the um, problems don't get dumped on you. It's it's empowering you to be part of the solutions. So it's not, in my opinion, it's not just three people deciding everything. Um, people who actually have a vested interest have a voice. Um, so um, you can always say, hey, this is over our heads. We need help. Um, and no one's going to turn their back on you. Okay. But I do want to thank Parks and Rec um, for all of the work done on the second floor. It's like <laughs> huge, <laughs> huge, huge difference. Um, and I know we filled the dumpster, but um, it looks great. Great progress. So we'll get back to what Sam would. What other? Oh yeah, I definitely will. I'm curious now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So we have a point. Yeah. Paperwork. He gave all paperwork to Wendy. Um, for oh, his name. this gentleman. Yep. So this is for a part time seasonal driver. No problem. Good. Uh, and 
is Eric Keeley. Eric Kelly. What was that? Kelly. Eric Kelly. What did I say? Kelly. Kelly. Uh, I'm Laura Kelly. Sorry. It's too bad because I know who he is, too. I know. <laughs> he just retired from Rutland DPW after 30 years, so he has some time to give us. <laughs> Maybe second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Lucy? Aye. Okay. Next up, Mr. Rochette. Light Health Phone System. Yeah, Paul Rochette, I reside on Gaffney Road. Uh, over a period of time, I've been voluntarily trying to help the Council of Aged get their financial pictures and structures, you know, squared away. And one of the things that really puzzled me was the, the Mitel phone bill, okay? Apparently, it gets divided among five or six different budgets. Uh, I'm just going to ask Aaron, maybe it'll help me prove my point. Like on the Board of Health, do you actually know how much of the Mitel bill, you know, the Board of Health is paying? I do. Or, or what line that they're charging it to? I do. Because some it's of us, zero. some of us don't get it. Okay. It's zero. So it, it's very confusing. And basically, it's a bill that the taxpayers pay, okay? Dividing it up five or six ways doesn't save the town anymore. And if you're trying to reconcile your your budget against the monthly budget to expense report, you can't reconcile a line. The only opportunity is to try and get a hold of the accounting firm to see where the lost money is. And so you're wasting their time. Okay, you're wasting everybody else's time and all the boards. I think I would like to just maybe propose that for FY 2025, a line item be put under the, the town hall budget for like telephone communications and be funded sufficiently to pay this bill all out of one line item and take this, I don't even know what to call it, okay, this fiasco out of everybody else's budget and just make life easier for them because I mean, we're trying to put together a budget that is, you know, responsible and relatively accurate. And when you get something like this that occurs and it's just a complete surprise every month, I mean, I don't know how, how you can do it. I don't know. Simplicity has always been the best way to go when you can do it. And I, I think, like I say, putting a single line item under the town hall would help everybody all the way around. It would eliminate bothering the accounting firm. I mean, it just, uh, seems to be the best way to me to go on and I'd like to see the the select board maybe not at this meeting but you know we want to just bring it up and vote on it and suggest that you add that to the the town hall budget and in a single line item will be much appreciated by everybody all the way around I think there's a lot of things like that that could probably be looked at it, it is and it's very confusing you know it doesn't need to be that way I agree with you. All that is a nightmare. I figured that out. Thank you. And like I say, I'm not asking the town to spend any more money. I'm just trying to save no, everybody a lot of problems. It's not easy. Sure. Lucy, do you have any opinion? The way Paul is describing it and that he would like to see is the way that that might tell was presented to the town and then we found out later that some of the departments then were getting charged but it was like a year or two into the program and some departments were not being charged but it was initially put in that it was going to be one bill and everybody would have a stake in that bill but um, you would be able to keep track of it and I agree with Paul you cannot keep track of it the difference with like the the boards, we're not making any calls on it. Um, so there's no like long distance or local calling. It's just a, a voicemail. Whereas there's a physical phone. Um, so I don't know what costs, how many calls actually go out of there that actually are related to board the Council on Aging. We're paying for the um, Meals on Wheels. 
Um, but um, uh, that, that I think is probably why the boards and committees that don't have a phone probably weren't being included in the uh, distribution. I mean, the townspeople are responsible. Anyway. Yeah. So if it just comes out of a single line item, mm -hmm. what difference does it make, yeah. you know? I'm sure none of the departments are wasting the phone usage. And when somebody needs to use it more than the others, I mean, God bless them. I mean, that's what it's there for. I, I don't think anyone's going to have a problem doing that. We would have no problem with that, Don. Actually, it makes all kinds of sense to me. I mean, I've, I've heard different pieces of this over the last year, it seems like, and it just, it, it's one of those things that is easily fixed, yeah. and this sounds like the most reasonable solution. Okay. And I think the town hall is a good place to put it for the budget. I'll talk to uh, the accountant about it, too, just to make yeah. sure she doesn't have an issue, but I, I would see no issue. We're all in agreement. Sounds good. Uh, just a real quick question. I know there was a, a, a problem with the town owned fax machine. Has that been corrected? Oh, I was going to bring that up under old business, but I had Verizon come out. The line is working, so it's the actual fax machine here in the building. So I know the police department had similar problem and they, I think they had the same fax machine, so they needed to order a new one. So I don't know, is that something that we can just order or go to CM Geeks to get a, like a recommendation? I have no idea. No, okay. So. Uh, Steve Dollinger, 157 Robinson Road. Does the yeah, Council yeah. of Aging need a fax ma machine? No, because we're paying for a line that we really don't need to pay for a line. So we were trying to eliminate a, an expense, although if it gets okay. absorbed by the town, but. Why, why use uh, two fax lines? I don't think any faxes actually go out on this fax. Okay. Rarely, uh -huh. um, except for what the council, the um, Meals on Wheels, the Elder Services uses. R really, that's the only faxes um, that are going out. That ever go out from a town perspective. And that's being used downstairs. Right now it's being used. If we keep the one upstairs and just get rid of that bill for them. Um, <laughs> So just order a new fax and yeah, because that uh, um, when you make photocopies, they come out terrible on that machine anyway. So and I believe well, the fax ding downstairs ding. belongs to the elder services. The one downstairs and does it work? It does. Right now, it is working. I checked today actually. Yeah, so uh, they cool. have to keep it, and I had told until Barbara that fixed. until this is resolved. Yeah. Cool. I'd love to see us go to like eFax or something, but. Slow down. Down the road. Why can't you just send an email? I don't know if Elder Services has that. We're just entering the 2000s. <laughs> Slow down. <laughs> okay. Uh, next up, we have the opera. I don't, I believe, Miss Pucci. Yes, thank oh. you. Yes, um, Barbara Pucci, East Hill Road East. And uh, thank you for the corresponding with me via email about ARPA. Um, I had requested information as to how much was left remaining of ARPA funds and also um, requested information about what the process has been for soliciting uh, ideas and then the criteria for uh, ARPA projects and then subsequently how things were approved or denied. And you gave me quite a bit of information. Again, thank you for that. So right now, see there, uh, maybe I'll go over some of the information that you sent for, for the, um, the ARPA funding. So the town was awarded Five hundred thousand eighty-four dollars nine hundred and sixty-one, um, and as of November eleventh, two 
$200,014,245 has been spent. There's a total of 106,500 that's allocated, but has not been spent. Which leaves a balance of $264,000 and $15 and 24 cents. And um, you're, you had some great uh, descriptions of what ARPA can be used for um, in what you've done so far. But you, you, you've read right here that you will continue to review projects to improve services to townspeople, assist employees, replace and, replace and repair equipment and infrastructure as needed, assist with temporary staff and consultants, as well as any other projects that, Im that projects that improve the effectiveness and efficiency of town government. Um, and then as far as what funds can be used for, you explained that initially it, it was somewhat restrict restrictive, but the federal government has relaxed the re restrictions. But now the funds can be used for water and sewer projects. So one suggestion I have um, as a resident is that the sewer and the water for the library become a priority, really, um, because certainly that will assist the employees, but it, all of the towns, many, many townspeople that use that wonderful library service. Mm -hmm. um, broadband connections, any infrastructure, construction or repairs, equipment purchases, repairs, vehicle purchases, wages, salaries and benefits, excluding pensions, premium pay for employees, not to exceed an additional $13 per hour, computer technology, software, matching funds for grants, and various health projects. So um, my request tonight to bring this up was to ask for uh, maybe a public information campaign about um, ARPA, you know, again, to let townspeople know what this is, how much is there, and a process for the, the various departments and our committees and residents to submit ideas. And then that a very public process on how those projects are looked at, what's the criteria, and then um, public process for approving projects. So that's that. We posted that on the Facebook page. I already got a request from the <laughs> Excellent. Very good. I think here. really that there's many yeah, people that don't know. Aggressive with it. Yeah. 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 That's a lot of money and it can be it can be used for a lot of good in the town. Yes. On um, September 18th, I actually asked for that to be put on our town website. Um, and it has been on there. I'm guessing people don't know what's on there. No. Um, but it does say on there what was allocated, what was spent, and that we do encourage the community to be involved. Um, the meeting after a request was made to send to all the boards and committees. Boards and committees were given that information. I think that was the first time that it had been done. Um, and um, so, you know, it, it, we're getting there. Um, but just since your email, you know, I, I came up with ideas on the field. Um, I heard from uh, someone involved in youth um, activities that was like, oh, we should do, what do we do for youth in OCAM? Not much. Um, so what could we do? Um, so uh, we, we, I guess would caution us, we don't want to rush to spend it because we don't have to. Um, we, we have until December 31st of 2024 to determine what is earmarked for a project. And we have until 2026 to spend that money. Um, but if you sit in one of these chairs, you go to the floor. In my opinion, <laughs> we should be allocating $150 each for our six chairs to replace defunct equipment like chairs. And even these chairs, uh, we should be looking at you know, where we can invest um, now. Um, but that's, you know, $900 for six chairs. Um, I, I'm requesting that we allocate $2,000 for dumpster and shred it um, to remove the approximately um, 10 95 gallon um, containers of materials that need to be shredded on the second and third floor and on the first floor and in closets um, stuff going back um, to the 40s 
um, that we don't need to save vouchers. Um, you know, there's uh, rules about how long you need to save them, but we don't need to create uh, fire hazards um, more than we already have. So, you know, I had come up with $2,000 for the town hall um, yeah. cleanup. Yeah. Um, and then we talked about it maybe two meetings ago, allocating approximately, um, I think it was $1,500, $2,000 for tablets um, for the Board of Selectmen. We're using our own equipment to collect all this material. It's all public information. I would much rather not use my um, equipment um, to conduct town business. I think that's a reasonable um, use of, of ARPA funds. We're not asking ta taxpayers, although I think that would even be reasonable there. Um, and, um, you know, for the, we could look at um, uh, so many other things um, if we give the public an opportunity to think, come up with crazy ideas. And, you know, perhaps there's, again, it's part of the, what is this process, really? What is the overarching goal of the types of projects the town is looking for? And perhaps there's even something that on a monthly basis, um, there's decisions made if it's something that's 2,000 or less. Um, you know, maybe you want to put X number of dollars towards matching grants. Oh. Maybe that the, the deadline for that is a little bit farther out. Mm -hmm. But unless there's some type of process put into place, mm -hmm. I'm afraid that it won't be public. Um, I'm, af I'm afraid that the year will go by. And then you're scrambling at the end. Um, but to have matching funds for a grant is a very, very good position to be in. That's going to take some time. But without a framework of what we're what the town is trying to do with those funds, Again, it, it will be sitting here in a blink of an eye in 2024. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Agree. And the nice thing is Paxton, North Brookfield, they have all the protocols that they built as part of their committee, their ARPA committee, um, that solicited public input that had a process for approval. It's actually not the Board of Selectmen who make the recommendations in those towns. It's this ARPA committee. Um, that presented, you know, this is what we've got for public input. And those committees are still in existence three years in. Um, but to the point earlier about volunteers, you know, do we have the volunteers for another committee? It's kind of been left on the Board of Selectmen to be it. Uh, but certainly, I think the Board of Selectmen would take input um, so on ideas. Lucy, did you have anything? No, Lucy, did you have anything? No, I didn't. Okay. So could I formally request that we allocate um, $900 for six um, executive chairs for the um, uh, selectman meeting room, uh, which is used for any board or committee that uses this room, um, and two thousand dollars for the town hall cleanup, which is removal of um, dumpster material um, and uh, shredding of all of the um, uh, legal documents that require shredding. And I did get an estimate um, from two companies today. Um, and it's approximately eight hundred to a thousand dollars for the ten ninety five gallon. And if we didn't need that much, then it's fifty five dollars per um, container. Could you open that up to the public? If they so um, the board of um, health is considering that adding that in January um, as a, a town wide um, uh, shredded day. Um, and for three hours, it's $225 per hour. Um, and so I'll be making that recommendation to the Board of Health um, to fund that um, for residents um, at that time. But um, I really would like to get this particular project moving um, and um, allow that uh, investment for townspeople in June. Was that, a motion? that was a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Zoom equipment invoice. Um, please, excuse me. Oh, I just had a real quick question. Um, Aaron, sorry, Steph, there's a brief read. Did you mention that, um, was it Julia Herrick that contacted you regarding these sorts? No. Okay, we were, Parks and Rec were approached. Uh, our recommendation after getting more information was for her to come here tonight, but she wasn't able to. Um, for soccer equipment, they want to bring soccer back to right field. Uh, but it would require OCAM to invest money in soccer goals. And her presentation, was it 10,000 a goal or was it a 10,000? Okay. So 10,000 total. Is that something that this fund would be used for? That's like a crazy amount of money in my opinion. But. I mean, cause I was looking at um, goals today. I mean, they have them as little as a hundred dollars. So I, I think being fiscally responsible is important and i don't know that we need the cadillac right. um, so there's a lot in between but i think we should invest in youth sports or the youth in ocam and so i think we should look at options um, i'm just not sure that that what would be is. the appropriate way i know right now we haven't voted for parks and rec to take over formally any of that kind of thing but um what would be the best avenue for Julia to, I guess, take this up? Give us a proposal of what you're looking to do with the costs uh, presented to us. So we had also recommended to her that getting a firm commitment from the different organizations yes. would be something that would go a far away, yes. stating that they would be willing to schedule teams to actually use the field. Right. You would like to see that rather than I think I want to do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and as we talked in Parks and Rec, that it sounds great and it's an initial, uh, you know, great in theory, but if, you know, I think initially it was like a women's league and possibly for the older kids, but if that fizzles, we just want to make sure that we have commitment and an agreement, a signed agreement with um, the soccer leagues around to help yeah. fund this yeah. uh, moving forward and not just fizzle down and then we have these expensive nets that no one are using or you know we also considered what that would how that would impact the mowing uh because we said you know do, yeah. are they gonna where are they gonna be stored can they be kept outside the cheaper, uh, the cheaper frames you can move around it into the no have to be bolted into the ground versus the more expensive ones are made to break down after the season and be stored and that's another obstacle that we talked about is the limited on storage too so thinking of all these steps ahead of time of where, where will we store it can they stay outside maybe behind that shed when they're up in place again we use the field for like multiple functions so where is it going to be placed how is could it going be a to be shed placed? down there a non-permanent <laughs> a non-permanent shed. shed yeah so i think that in parks and rec we talked there's a lot of steps to just make sure that the best decision is made for the town um i mean i would love to see that but again just with everything lining up accordingly and not just make a big investment and then fizzle all right so we'll go back with julia and have her revise her presentation and proposal and then so then we would submit it to the board for consideration. Yeah. You're getting on the agenda for a meeting. Okay. Thank you. So don't don't Barbara Pucci these two rows. So just to clarify, then moving forward with the process about the ARPA funds is to contact the board of selectmen and get on the agenda, bring your idea in, and will the decisions be made each meeting like that? Or we could do it if we know ahead of time. Mm -hmm. What you're looking at. If you have a plan, submit it to us, email it to us. We can read it ahead of time, mm -hmm. be prepared. That would certainly help. Mm -hmm. You guys get a lot of research to, <laughs> to do. On that. But, like, to the point of why was I hoping that we could give this authority to Parks and Rec? Mm -hmm. It would be something like that. So, you're doing Oktoberfest. Well, what the heck is this soccer field doing here? It's now in our way. Well, in the future, my hope would be Parks and Rec would give a recommendation to say, yes, we support this. And the Board of Selectmen for ARPA funds approves the disbursement of ARPA funds, but wouldn't do it if you were saying, 
we think this is a bad idea. Yeah, I don't think any of us are opposed to it, honestly. It's more, we've been contacted over the years for very bands looking to book. We had to dig up a contact. Nobody knows who was in charge of bands, you know, the friends of the bandstand. Um, and I know that Stephanie and I in the meeting spoke about, you know, after our next event is Cookies with Santa in a couple of weeks in December. But after that, you know, for a few months, it's kind of quiet time-ish. Um, that would be a great time to put it out there to try to draw new blood to join the committee or volunteer because like anything else, three, four people, five people can't always hold it's down the floor. Voting for a quorum though. <laughs> yes. So licenses. Oh. Invoices. Yes. Sorry. So these um license well no this is the invoices for the equipment purchased for zoom initially this was intended to be paid out of the cable committee um account cable access account um it didn't there was a lot of back and forth with the former accountant a purchase order had to be created um so therefore it just it, it never got paid we were informed recently by the new accountant, same firm, new accountant, that funds cannot be uh, expended out of the cable access account without it being voted at a town meeting, whether it's special or annual. So you can take a lump sum, like right, and say, you know, the remove 20,000 and then spend it as you want in an article, but you can't just process an invoice through it. So. Needless to say that these invoices run for $10,002.13, $1,396.01, and $1,688.70 are still pending and need to be paid. And this is for all the equipment for the televisions, the stands, the cameras, um, all of it. I move that the sum of all three outstanding invoices be paid from other funds. which I believe was about 14,000 and change. $13,086.84. I amended it with that amount. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I think it's good that we are going to follow the processes with that money. Um, that money has been collected from charter um, subscribers who have no other choice in their cable access. Um, and um, uh, there's a good sum of money available to be used, whether we wanted to have a portable video, video uh, recorder to go to different events um, and then to use on uh, for public access. I believe the account has 17,000 in it. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to make it for the record that Kathleen Dunn, who's been very involved, um, has all this information. She's been notified that the account, the funds were not taken, so it's intact. Okay. And she will communicate, I think, to the rest of the committee. And, and we don't have an article for the special on this. It, it's, it would be for the annual. Okay. So no, nothing could be spent out of that until it's right. Voted by the so what Lori suggested is that you know take five thousand dollars, and that way it can sit in an article, and that the articles can get carried over and spent it appropriately. You know, on different things that might come across. Did she happen to say how much goes in there every year? No. 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 The per subscriber per mm -hmm. month. Um, the, uh, I have the last couple turnovers. Um, I know one was like $1,500 for last year and then an, an additional 
the franchise fee for two hundred and three dollars. So I think the last year was like seventeen hundred dollars, give or take. Balance on the cable now. <laughs> Aren't you lucky you now have access? It's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, actually, Evan Berenger on Grace Lane got it today. Grace and Sanders are eligible for upgrade. Yeah. And I think we said this at the last meeting, but there was a schedule that was given by um, the contact from Charter that I also did yeah. forward to Kathleen. So she has that. I think East Hill Road was first early quarter. next year. <laughs> I think everything is first quarter of next year, except for one um, that has no houses on it. Yeah. Um, Stone. Oh. Oh, okay. Stone Road. Okay, next up is the social media policy. Um, so um, this was one of the items I brought up um, back in September. Um, and um, for our... Um, Practice. This was sent to boards and committees um, for input um, because it impacts them. Um, I'm not aware of any board or committee providing any feedback, um, but I took the liberty of um, um, utilizing Koppelman and Page's um, uh, reviewed policy, um, inserting a few um, Things like uh, referencing the town of underline, put in OCAM. Um, it, it talked about permits departments. I said I added officials, boards, and committees um, wherever there was a town, town department only. Um, so I made um, some updates to this. Um, uh, I added um, each town. Uh, social media moderator administer, administrator shall acknowledge this policy prior to be assigned access rights. This is important because the use of a town social media is just like um, sending a letter to the town as far as public records go. Um, it is a public record. It cannot be deleted. Um, you can't shut off comments. Um, and so if we're, um, we have many uh, boards um, in the absence of a policy over the years, me included, in 2020, at the beginning of COVID, I created a Board of Health page um, that um, uh, we have no oversight of and potential liability if we violate um, open meeting law. So this is all about protecting the town, making sure that we're being fully transparent. Um, another item that I added was um, town boards, departments, committees, which are subject to requirements for hosting of meetings shall use their social media page to share meeting notices and agendas. I don't think there's anything more important um, using a social media page than to share information about opportunities to be part of our process. Um, board of Selectmen will retain a listing of all approved town social media sites. I think we have to um, at least be aware of you know, the high, highway department doesn't have one that I know of, but the police department does, the fire department, parks and rec, board of health, town of Oak Kim, library. Is there anything else out there? There's actually two parks of rec sites, um, but one is not controlled by a, a town uh, appointed, elected, or employee um, to ensure that the town social media site remains available for the use of the town. Redundancy of administrative rights to this account shall be shared with at least one other person. Prior to a resignation, termination, or vacancy of an individual with moderator administrator rights, those rights should be transferred to another authorized individual. That way we don't have an issue of parks and rec where it's just this site out there and you have to create a whole new site. Um, uh, identification and social media posts where possible, if not obvious, who the individual posting on behalf of the town, office board, committee, or department, notate your initials at the end of any post. So on the board of health posts, um, I do all of them, but I put my initials. So if anybody ever had a question, why did you say that? They know who um, posted it. Um, so those were the only content edits um, 
that I made to the policy that was not um, from Koppelman page. I take that back. Um, there's a signature page that all employees, boards, committees would sign. Um, I, it says to be included in the employee's personnel file. I said um, to be included in the employees or elected appointed officials um, personnel file and with the office of the board of selectmen. Um, that way the board knows um, if there's ever a, a freedom of information or a public records request, who has access and how we can ensure that um, the public has a right to that information request. So this was my recommended uh, updates to the social media policy. <clears throat> Good. Lucy, do you have anything? No, I do not. That sounds good. I'd like to see some being invited, please. Okay. I just have a question yeah. on the records retention. Um, last page of page six. Uh, it says, um, the the department should retain copies of social media posts such as by printing or otherwise snapshots. So should we be doing that for every post that is made or I guess it's periodic. Um, the um, current social media sites are, um, unless Facebook were to go out of business, um, back when those of us who had MySpace, we had the opportunity to download all of your, whatever they call them, uh, posts. Um, right now, things live in perpetuity on um, Facebook. So again, this is Koppelman and Page. Um, they, um, I think it talked about most likely save your content for some period of time. Um, yeah. So, so no need for that. I, I don't think so. It's okay. called the, uh, uh, sorry to interrupt. It's called downloading an archive. So in your account, you're able to go into it and download the archive for the entirety of the account. So like if we were to close the Parks and Rec account, we could archive that account so it was saved forever. Okay. We have access to it, though, correct? Mm -hmm. Which is why we, not one person should ever have access to anything as important as the website or a social media profile that's representing the town of Oak Um So does Lucy, would Lucy want to have time to read this before we vote on it? Yes. Yes. So if I, I would ask that we put this on the next meeting agenda for... progress. Yes. Okay, I'm going to put you back on speaker, okay? You're welcome. She's back. Right, who we'll put it on for 12 for one? Next up is funding for MMA annual meeting. So um, just so the board is aware, um, I um, saw a, um, a posting um, on the Mass Municipal Association's website, which if you haven't looked at it, it um, has a fantastic resources for um, finance committee, for, for um, any board or committee um, in, in Massachusetts. Um, I knew nothing about it um, prior to um, uh, researching being a member of the Board of Selectmen, and then I um, used its uh, free resources, although we are a, a member. Um, 
They have a um, municipal select board association as well. Um, and they were looking for um, a volunteer to fill the Worcester County uh, vacancy, which goes until um, through January through the following January due to a um, resignation. Um, and um, I submitted my name um, for uh, consideration, uh, met with uh, a 10 person nominating committee um, and was selected um, to represent Worcester County on the Municipal Select Board Association um, with the um, intended goal of representing rural uh, communities like OCAM, um, which they said that I was the shortest term um, select board member ever on this um, uh, board, um, but um, they uh, appreciated the um, desired focus. And so um, I'll be um, submitted in January um, for a, uh, a vote. Um, and so there is a annual um, Mass Municipal Association um, training um, uh, that um, I don't know if previous board members have participated um, but it's um, it's in Boston, um, and it, it begins at I think seven thirty on Friday morning. It goes until end of day on Saturday, um, and um, I uh, would like to request that this be uh, funded by the town. Um, it will be for the benefit of the town. It's not just because um, I happen to be the representative for Worcester County, but I think. Um, much like other boards and committees who are working on behalf of um, our community, we should be looking at making sure they get the resources um, to do their job um, well. Um, and so not uh, looking just to offer it for me, but um, looking to um, allocate funding um, for um, the board uh, to participate in this event. And I think I, I came up with um, uh, what it costs. Um, and if it's not funded, um, as long as nobody tells my wife, um, I still plan on going. Um, but um, rather not spend that. Let's see. Per uh, attendee. Uh, quick qu question, Aaron. Steve Donalder, 157 Robinson Road. So, what is what do you what is the details of what you're doing? You don't mind. So, so on the everybody. on the um, Matt. So, the the two things are one is attending the event that select board members, finance chairs, anybody in the state um, often will attend. Um, and then there is um, part of that is uh, a annual meeting. Um, where members of the um, Mass Municipal Association, um, I think it's a 15 member uh, board, um, have an afternoon meeting, I think on um, that Saturday, um, where they take uh, votes on different matters. But the Mass Municipal Association provides resources on public meetings, on social media policies, on bylaws that you should consider due to current events. Um, and so um, on that, with that hat, um, I'd be representing uh, OCAM and um, Worcester County uh, on its interests. But on the event itself, it has multiple uh, trainings, um, presenters on things uh, related to um, uh, budgeting, um, open access, uh, public meetings, um, and, and sorts. Did you find that number? Mm -hmm. Did that answer your question, Stephen? Aaron? Yeah, like grant writing and stuff like that as well. C correct. That is that was one of the uh, topics. That's yes. awesome. That's that's awesome. Aaron, when I was on the finance committee, I attended their meetings, mm -hmm. and they were where just... you took me to some of them. You were yeah, when I was first on. Yeah. Well, that one was the state. That training. was the state one. That does yeah, it. but this is Mass Municipal, and they provide all kinds of handbooks and all kinds of training. They were really great to work with. Yeah. And, and a lot, of, a lot of a lot of contacts, a lot of people out there willing to help you. Okay. So it's really worth the money. Yeah. So in your email, Aaron, you stated per attendee total cost are two nights hotel, 
Thursday and Friday, 222 a night, two day conference, $240, parking unknown, estimated cost between $666 to $800. And I, I would be taking a day off of work um, to attend. I thought that was a Friday. Yeah. It's, um, it starts at 7.30 in the morning. So they do have a pre-event um, Thursday night. Um, so uh, my preference would oh, be right. to go in Thursday afternoon um, and stay until Saturday afternoon when it's open. It's a tremendous amount of information. The contacts are fantastic. Absolutely. And, and I've been attending the um, rural um, committee that Ann Gobi leads every Thursday. Um, and she shared um, with that group who mostly are uh, Worcester County West um, communities. So um, that event, that weekly event, um, sometimes it's as short as 10 minutes. Um, but has come up with a lot of great contacts. Um, there's actually um, um, a free webinar on Wednesday on the role of um, uh, different governments, um, town administrator form of government, um, electing versus appointing town clerks, um, treasurer collector. Um, and so I plan on attending that from 12 to one on um, uh, Wednesday. And all those things are recorded and available um, to watch. So I guess my question is, should we allocate opera funds um, for the purpose of um, individuals attending this event? I agree. And what budget would we set? Mm -hmm. So I would say uh, recommend budgeting these eight times three twenty four hundred dollars um, from ARPA um, for uh, this conference for those that choose to come. And the aside from the hotels, um, the invoice for the event is an invoice that they do after the event. Yep. But to um, book a hotel, we have to um, uh, put up. Um, I believe to reserve that room at that rate. Yeah, I was going to say there's a special rate. Yeah, yeah, two twenty two is a fantastic rate um, for being in Boston. And I'm not looking for food reimbursement. It's just the big chunk of the cost is the conference and the thing. Yes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next, we have an update on the special town meeting. Um, yes, I know that I think we talked about Parks and Rec had, uh, Sam had submitted this the last round for $2,800 for benches, but I think that that is going to, um, I think the O and B with funds the funds cover, um, the former treasurer has a bank check that she's going to be turning over to Parks and Rec. It doesn't hurt to approve it and then with the <coughs> Yeah, put it, put it on temporarily. So I submitted one on behalf of the Board of Selectmen, assuming the Board of Selectmen agrees with it, um, that um, the town of Ocam adopt a flag bylaw um, that states, no person shall fly or display a commemorative or organizational flag other than the United States flag, the Massachusetts state flag, the official town of Ocam flag, the official flags of all branches of the US military and armed forces, and or the POW MIA flag on a town flagpole. 
Uh, there are um, uh, things going on throughout the state um, where absent a policy or bylaw, um, anybody can uh, request to hoist a flag um, on a town flagpole. Um, and so this is an example of OCAM has a proud history of being anti-regulation, but in the absence of a regulation, we are open. Um, and I feel like this is a uh, proactive and very appropriate um, that uh, we reserve the American flagpole um, for flags that represent the town of OCAM. Uh, Board of Assessors submit um, to find $1,611.52 to be added to account stipulated to fund assessors owed benefits. Uh, this is retro holiday and personal days owed from FY 22, 23, and 24. This is as a result of um, identification of our bylaw that uh, right now states any regularly scheduled part time employee is eligible for uh, benefits. So the Historical Commission has um, uh, presented that we raise an appropriate or transfer from available funds a sum of $2,000 to be put in the OCAM Historical Commission account to be used for, re -en for engineering fees related to the plans and certification of the Green Hollow Arch construction project. Um, engineering and construction oversight approval must be completed before a building permit can be issued. So the board had previously um, stated that it was um, uh, likely comfortable um, funding at approximately $20,000. Um, and then there was the um, uh, recognition that a building permit would need to be required, which required engineering designs. And there was an unknown cost to that. Um, and the Historical Commission has identified it would cost approximately $1,500 um, to had said designs um, completed. Um, there may be in the future funds to cover that. Um, it looks like there will be, but um, for now, I'm submitting this um, article um, just in case to cover those fees. This is from Fox and Rec requesting approximately 5,000 for maintenance of Memorial Field. That's if they're going to do anything. But, um, we need a plan from them first. But yeah, I would say place it. Mm -hmm. If we don't need it, we can pass it over. We pass it over. And the rest of these we did last week. Yeah, and I know in, in regards to the town clerk, she had mentioned to me, and I think she spoke with Alan prior to the meeting, um, that she spoke with the town accountant when she was here last week and stated that maybe that go to reserve funds versus, and I know, Alan, I heard you she say, yes, yeah, it can go either way. So I don't know if she wants to, if that's going to stay on or I not. I was going to discuss it when we had a chance to, we haven't even. Um, what are you thinking on this? You want, you want to the article anyway? I would put the article in and let's, we're going to meet next week. Okay. Let me get the other guys to. You want a more comfortable chair? Yes. <laughs> I don't want one of the six you're getting. <laughs> you can have one of these. <laughs> we'll just place it. Just keep it in. You guys talk about it. What, we what did. Last week? Yeah. Because yeah. the rest of these I remember we did last week. Well, I would move that we accept all submitted. May I ask a question, please? I'm sorry, before there's a vote. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, Barbara Pucci, East Hill Road. The Historical Commission, do we have a 
Historical Commission. That's part of the town. I thought it was an association and not part no. of the town. We have an no. Oakland Historical Museum and we have an Oakland Historical Commission. So the commission is a town committee. Thank you. So I would move that we accept the articles as submitted for the um, uh, special town meeting in January. Second. Any discussion, Lucy? I just had a question on the building of the arch and the wording of the article. Once they do everything in the as far as the article is approved, and once they have done the work of what they intend to do, is the town giving them support and the board of selectmen giving them support from APA to build the arch? Yes. You are accepting to fund them completely. For the arch, yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Did you repeat that? No. <laughs> you want it in writing? I want it in writing, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the middle. It's being recorded. Well, I don't know what she said, so. Is so it... she wanted to know if we were funding it from opera. So you have the funding available for this for arch. The arch yep. And all right, we can get the funding. I'm Lee Hogan from uh, 807 Africa Road. And we do have the funding in the uh, OCAM Historical Commission that we could actually pay for the engineering fees. So that lets, this is Tom Petty who was granted the construction rights for the arch. So those two can get together now and write up a, a plan that would be acceptable that he can uh, certify and that. Uh, Rather, uh, Lenciani, the building inspector, will accept, and he will also, uh, Michael Maroney will also oversee, oversee the construction of this thing, which is also part of the, what the building inspector is looking for. So if we can get all that thing going, Tom Petty can grab the arch that's laying on the ground at Green Hollow and bring it to his shop and start building the arch. Okay. And hopefully have it completed by springtime. And I just want to put for the record that I it's 20,700. I move we um, allocate um, 21 uh, for the um, completion, because I think it's 20,000 and change. 744. Okay, so I move that we allocate $20,744. $774.80. And 80 cents. And 80 oh, cents. Yes. Oh my. <laughs> um, really? Uh, for I'll, the, I'll let Tom explain that. For the. Um, <laughs> arch. Right. Okay. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> and it will last for. 75 years. We're hoping for at least 15, maybe hopefully 100. The first one lasted 100 years, if I got close to it. And didn't have the material we're using today. We all licenses for 2024 renewals. Yes, these are the renewals for the liquor license in town. Golfer's arm, the liquor license, uh, Route 148 package of variety, full liquor license, Pine Acres Lodge, full license, uh, Oak Ham Pine, Pine Acres, that's a store of wine and malt, and agronomy wine and malt. But yes, we did, but they need uh, that ABCC. Okay, that's a separate thing. They need this form signed. And here it's anyone that's gotten denied, someone who didn't renew. We have none, but you still have to sign it. Um, and be submitted their the original copies. This is where the board would sign because there's nothing in all their taxes that have been checked. No one <laughs> has anything outstanding. There's nothing. And is there a limit to the number of licenses at town? Yes. And yes. yes. yeah, we're probably way under it. Yes. I think we have 14 licenses that we can't. I don't think you need that. 
He must not be favoring. <laughs> we go out of town for that. <laughs> And is there a motion to accept that? Yep. Both members, um, all board members. Yeah. I move we accept the um, liquor licenses. Yeah, it's only one. We have none that were denied or didn't renew. Thank you. That's it. I, I presented the other ones at the last meeting. We have two class twos. Um, I, I haven't done the certificates yet. I'll do those for the next month. Um, and there, it's for breakaway and um, OCAM trailers and sales, which is part of Pine Acres. And their taxes are up to date and ready. So I'll be. What about EHT? They are not able to be renewed until they straighten out their special permit, which um, they're starting pretty much from scratch. And he sent me an email asking for a list of under butters, so I addressed them to the Board of Assessor's office. Okay. And yeah, I, Phil, Phil had notified those people directly about two weeks ago. And, okay. so we have a new hearing. Right, we have to have a whole hearing all over again, so Sorry. they want to pursue it, so. Okay. Not sure what their plans are. Do have any new business? Uh, just a couple things. Um, I received an email actually. Nope, uh, it was in my junk mail. So I received it today, but it was from November 15th uh, about um, uh, investing, um, and I had a conversation with the um, treasurer today and previous about um, uh, how we're uh, investing um, funds that we have, um, and uh, most of our money is sitting in a money market earning um, pennies, um, but uh, with the interest rate, uh, this Municipal Insights is strongly recommending communities um, capitalize on the higher uh, interest rates um, and um, uh, evaluate um, all available uh, sources um, to ensure it's um, getting its best bang for its buck. And I know the treasurer um, does believe that there's um, opportunity um, to do this. Um, and I just, I think we should certainly look at it and see um, what options we may have available. Yeah, I would say have the treasurer look into it and see what our options are. Um, I know the communities are making the 5% the stabilization funds that we're not. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I believe um, Braintree is earning approximately $50,000 a year um, on um, on their fund, right. so. Um, and then the second item, um, again, I checked my junk mail today. Uh, I'm not sure when it came in, but the Municipal Cybersecurity Awareness Grant, as we embrace um, 2023 and all its technologies, um, I think it's important. This is a free Municipal Cybersecurity Awareness Grant. Um, and um, ensuring that we're participating. I know we got some emails a while back, but it's an this is an annual grant that offers um, different traditional advanced comprehensive education modules. I just want to make sure that we are participating in an ongoing um, cybersecurity because as we get into social media websites and any other online things um, that we take advantage and make sure we're expecting our employees and appointed and elected officials to be aware. Is that the one we started last year? Um, I know that we do cybersecurity through 
Maya, but I think that that's the one. Lucy, do you recall that? Because I know you are the one that initially pushed a lot of the cybersecurity. I did do that last year. We all signed up for it. We all took it. We all passed it. They will be probably be doing another grant and another session of it this year. Which is probably this one right here. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the one we got done, we'll see. Okay. We should continue with that. Yeah, because I know I so, yes. Yes. A, a lot yeah, of us well done. A lot of us had thought it was spam, so we were like, Yeah, we're not doing this. Um, but it really was legitimate. Yes. Lucy, do you have any new business? I do not have any new business. Oh. Welcome back, Lucy. Thank you. Yes. I have one piece of old business, or I, I just have a, re a request I'd like to make. Go ahead. Because I wasn't part of this, and I don't understand everything completely. But from my own mind, I would like to respectfully request to revisit the effect of the discontinuance of the fax machine downstairs on the our really very important nutrition program. This is essential for their record keeping and for the people that work down there for them. And I would just simply like to take a look at it again because uh, the town does not pay for it. It is paid for the formula grant, which um, I think would be something that we would need to look at before we discontinue it, or perhaps we could find another spot downstairs for it that wouldn't be in anybody's way. But I would just like to revisit that at our next meeting, please. Okay, December 4th. Fine. Is that the fax machine that belongs to Elder Services? Yes. Yeah. Lucy, I can just tell you that. Um, uh, the Council on Aging met with um, Elder Services um, to sign the revised agreement um, and uh, consented to the um, moving of the fax, mach fax machine to upstairs. To upstairs. Correct. Okay, then that makes another issue. Then I'd like to discuss at our next meeting. Thank you. Do we need to have the Council on Aging who has responsibility attend that meeting? I was going to advise Barbara. And that would cover that base. I didn't hear that. Uh, I'm Lucy, it's Claire. And I'll let Barbara know because Barbara was part of the meeting with, I can't remember his first name, yeah. Mr. Burns, I think. Burns. I always want to call him Ken Burns. You know? <laughs> okay. Signed up for this from MMA. It's the Cannabis Compliance Reviewing and Regulatory Requirements for Host Communities. You get a chance to watch that. It's only an hour. Mm -hmm. I, I saw that too. I highly suggest any board member to, to do this. I did the first one when they were doing the draft, and it severely, severely restricted what a town can do. Mm -hmm. um, to the point where we can't do anything. That's how bad it was. Mm -hmm. Now, can't do anything about what? Licensing them, controlling them. They can just come they, right in. The state will do everything. I think, wasn't that there were objections being raised about towns being very restrictive and also charging Greedy. money? Greedy. Yeah, yeah, right. And I yeah. think it moved the board to um, right. Right. remove restrictions. Yeah. So they had hearing, yeah. public hearings a few months yeah. ago. Yeah. And they came out with a final draft. Well, it's not a draft. They they enacted it, and this is what they enacted. Mm -hmm. So we gotta figure that out because yeah. it was an inquiry in town. So, um, and and this is another example where when we have nothing, we're at liberty. Um, so, yeah. Excuse me. Did it restrict you in terms of bylaws as well? Kind of, they can, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I remember having the town manager and selectman that was on that always raising holy heck mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, I guess. Well, I mean, are you talking about someone setting up shop to sell it here? Grow, uh, the growing, selling. A growth facility. Oh, a growth uh, facility. Oh. So, yeah. Yeah. so I'm going to chime in here. This is Steve Dollinger, 157 Robinson Road. Okay. So I've done extensive research on this. Okay. I see it. We're both done, I think. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. yeah. Yes, so I've done extent. Yes. Yeah, so I did extensive research to this during the original in incubation of the cannabis commission before it was done. I was in on a lot of this conversation with regards to technology in 2016. Mm -hmm. One of the things you can push back on when it comes to grows that they don't specifically call out. If you're in concern of this is security. When you have a massive grow, you have to have armed security. If they do not have armed security, it is not a proper grow because anybody can come in from out of town and try to hold them up because, again, you're not allowed to store this at a net. Any money that goes to this proceeds or any money that's exchanged, you need armored trucks, armored personnel, people that are uh, certified to hold this stuff. Okay, You need 24-7 by 365 monitoring, and you need sufficient support to do so. As we know, with emergency response, it comes and goes. Now, again, I'm not against or for it, but if you have concerns about it, there needs to be a proper security point in place to even implement that. And you're able to push back on the state for that, right? Because if they don't have proper security, you could have people just coming in and out of our town trying to rob them, right? And and I'm talking from a grow facility. I'm not even talking dispensary, Okay. And those regular, they, they set this at the Cannabis Commission, which I am, I was very involved with during the um, creation of it because I was trying to do regenerative grow and this and that and like using very affordable technology to restorative, right? It was a big industry for from a tech perspective. Point being is, is that you, they need to have very good security process, very good security plan to even implement a grow. If they don't, you can reject it. Because... Yeah, my understanding when I attended the Cannabis Commission way back when I was on the Finance Committee is that the state was putting through requirements anyhow for security, and you had absolutely yeah. security. Sorry. Yeah, the state was putting through the security requirements. Yeah, and I'm sorry, I got disconnected. But yeah, the security requirements are where you can push back, right? And that, that is key. If they don't have 24 by 7, 365 security, you can reject it. Any grow, because no matter what, you're going to have an indoor grow with an atrarium there, okay? So that means that they have to have automatic watering, fire suppression, um, RFID tags for in and out of everything, right? Proper badge in and out access. Like, it, it is detailed. And if they don't follow those procedures, guess what? No go, bro. I mean, sorry to be so nonchalant about it, but that's how it goes. Sorry, if anybody has a comment to that, please let me know. But like, it it, it needs to be like Fort Knox. We have to account for every invoice, whatever town expense is being used to uh. this. That's what the requirements are putting in because towns are trying to charge for fire right. trucks and everything right. else. Right. The cannabis the impact is on the road. Yeah. I mean, Route Nine yeah. and yeah. Leicester, they yeah. got a lot of money for that. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. Um, they put a stop to that. So yeah. You know, really detail everything yeah. to the point. But wasn't it still like 3%? 3% on gross revenue is still a lot of money for a town like Oak Kim. Yeah. You had Agreed. Tool. You had to prove that you were spending three percent. That's the right. point. That's the problem. <laughs> they, they, they want copies of all the invoices, all the pays, all, all that stuff. So. Is that is that but available that, that, to the public to view? Oh, absolutely. Yes. We have to do oh, yeah. The yeah. Cannabis Commission, or go on the internet. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. again, yeah. like having yeah, yeah. Fi the fire department right, here right, on call. <laughs> the fire department on call, right? You have to have at least a couple of people. 24 by 7, 365 on call to have it's them ready and available again. to put out a fire. He's still road. <laughs> <laughs> there have been grows out there, but not. Um, yeah, that's not the one we're, we're talking, talking about. about. Yeah. 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 yeah.
<laughs> oh, here we go. Maybe that's right. Yeah. Let's get the signs ready. <laughs> Any other old business? Uh, old, uh, yes. Um, we are. At, that was new, right? That was new. Okay, so old, yes. Yeah. Um, where are we with the volunteer policy? We were waiting. On... I'm still waiting on town council. I, I, <laughs> okay. I know that this is a busy time of year with special town meetings, but I will again follow up on him. But under old business, Bill also. I don't know if you guys saw this update. Um, on behalf of the OCAM Town Hall Planning Committee, has looked into two concepts. Um, I think he submitted it just because of he initially for under ARPA funds. I'd like uh, time to review it yeah. and maybe Phil can come and talk about it. This is getting into design of selection yeah. and stuff. This is very, very detailed. And down the road, probably quite a bit. I've been through this. Yeah, this is very. very but I, I think it would be appropriate use potentially of uh, ARPA funds. But, um, uh, you know, what's the town's interest in that? That's why I said mm -hmm. the town meeting. The judge. Yep. Yeah. He's got two proposals here. Mm -hmm. Where are the other two or three proposals potentially? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's too big a project to just. Yeah, I just wanted to bring it before you because he didn't, he wasn't able to yeah. stay. Um, other old business, um, a couple uh, meetings ago, um, there was conversation about um, minutes and posting of agendas and, and that sort. And so I requested from the town clerk a list of um, appointments um, as well as outstanding uh, minutes from all of the boards and committees. Um, and like uh, Board of Health um, has one, uh, Board of Assessors was complete. This was as of, um, uh, the middle of November that had been over a month late. Board of Selectmen at that time had 11. Cemetery Commission was missing one. Council on Aging was fine. Finance Committee was fine. The Library of Trustees was missing six. Parks and Rec was missing 12. Um, and the Planning Board was missing none. Um, and if they're not on this list, it doesn't mean that they um, don't have any outstanding minutes. It means it could mean that they've never posted an agenda. Um, and of the appointments, there's an entire committee that's never been sworn in. Um, and um, uh, there's an expectation that within two weeks of appointment that um, uh, any elected or appointed individual um, uh, attest to receiving the uh, open meeting law or the ethics. Um, and so there's no guarantee that individuals representing the town of Oakham um, value or understand what's expected under open meeting or um, uh, the ethics. And I, I really feel as though um, it's important that every board um, receive a firm reminder of the importance of open meeting law, the ethics requirements being sworn in, um, and that uh, they take action swiftly uh, to come into compliance. And I've provided um, two checklists um, that I'd like to see go into all the mailboxes and be emailed to every uh, email that we have for appointed, elected, or um, employees. Uh, that public body checklist for posting a meeting no notice. Um, I think many of us, um, do our well, we all do our best, um, but we miss the um, requirements sometimes. And this is a pretty easy checklist to know how to do it. Um, and then a um, public body checklist for creating and approving minutes, which it clearly states minutes must be approved in a timely manner. Timely manner will generally be considered within the next three public body meetings or within 30 days, whichever is later. Um, unless the public body can show good cause for further delay. Um, I think um, 
transparency um, is essential in government, and um, we have a, a obligation to remind people um, that we take that seriously. And this, um, these checklists come from um, the open meeting. Um, yeah. I think things can get ahead of us or away from us. Um, and um, we gotta pull it in, in my opinion. I'd be happy to distribute these um, unless um, the board would like the um, administrative assistant to distribute them. That's what we pay her for. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me, Aaron. Did you say that all every <coughs> sorry, Stephanie, did you bring two rooms? I had to add a fourth one. <laughs> I think I'd see it. Um did you say that all the individuals or the groups should be receiving an email or have received an email? Uh no, nobody has received a reminder. Um, but I will say that I think all of Parks and Rec I think you're right. Has well, I mean you have several minutes that have not been turned in, but um you've all been sworn in um yep everybody on parks and recs has been sworn in so therefore know the requirements of open meeting law and what boards have members that haven't been sworn in according to this from two weeks ago um table internet nobody um zoning board of appeals um, nobody. Fire department, police department, 100%. Finance committee, I uh, believe 100%. 100% is three. Great job. Um, open space, uh, three out of the four have not. Town hall study committee, one has not. And that's it. I think uh, a, a process between the appointing authority, the town clerk, um, and some accountability on checks and balances is um, important. <clears throat> An opportunity going forward. Um, and then uh, I guess under correspondence, um, uh, I had something about the resignation of the Board of Health there. Um, so um, the Board of Health forwarded to the Board of Selectmen um, the resignation of the clerk for the Board of Health. Um, and do um, we have to read it? Um, um, who has been excellent, uh, superb, and it will be a huge loss for the town of Oak County. And so. Yeah. Okay. Um, on behalf of the Board of Health, we need more permanent solutions. And I wonder if there may might be another solution to recruit and retain. Kylie was a great employee. Oh, that's your, just your yep. email, sorry. <laughs> Um, so Kylie uh, says, Dear OCAM Board of Health, please accept this letter of resignation for my position of Board of Health Clerk. My last day to work will be December 7th. Uh, I am resigning purely due to personal reasons. I have been struggling to find enough time to focus on my graduate courses in accounting uh, as much as I need to be. At this time, I need to be putting my schoolwork as a higher priority and cannot balance everything. I appreciate the opportunities afforded me to to me during my time in this role, I will do my best to organize and any loose ends in my remaining time to make this a smooth transition. If there's any, if there are any projects of high priority you would like me to focus on completing, please let me know. I'm sorry for the inconvenience and I hope you understand, Kylie. And I sent an email on behalf of the Board of Health to the Board of Selectmen um, asking us to consider potential other solutions. Um, we have been fortunate to have this position um, for two years, and we've had two individuals in this role. It's a, a two to five hour uh, and a week um, 
position. Um, she's Kylie has actually been working in North Brookfield and in OCAM in order to give her additional hours. Um, not always easy to get somebody to just agree for five hours, um, but we do need to uh, replace it as soon as possible. Um, and per policy of the Board of Selectmen, only the Board of Selectmen can approve posting of a um, position. Okay. Um, so uh, Maribel would post it, and if Maribel, if you could share it on the town Facebook page as well, mm -hmm. and then I'll share it on the Board of Health Facebook page. But before we, um, before the Board of Health interviews, maybe the Board of Selectmen can consider if there are any other options. <clears throat> Question, please, Barbara East Hill East. Is there any um, update on the vacancies for the town clerk and the town accountant? That's up next. Um, and I, there was a question on the chat. Sorry, Tiffany. Um, yeah, bring that up. Um, I have a question about the school and I think I missed that timing. If parents thought there were a need to repave playground blacktop, would that be something to ask the town to look into the school district or a shared project? That is on the list of repairs. So for ARPA, potentially? No. Okay. No, 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 no. Okay. That should be covered under Chapter 90. Oh, that's right. And Kevin talked about that. Kevin talked about that. So uh, what he didn't want to do is do it during school. So maybe one of the vacations. Tiffany, does that answer your question? I can unmute you. Or you can unmute yourself. Or you can chat. <laughs> Send smoke signals. Okay. Two candidates on this Friday for the interim town clerk. One candidate clearly has a lot of experience in the area, has been a town clerk in the past. Town resident. Second one is also a town resident but doesn't have the experience. I think this is too much of a key position experienced person in there, particularly with the elections coming up in the presidential election next year, all the <laughs> primary stuff, town, town, special town meeting, the annual town meeting. So I know we don't have it on here for appointments, but we can actually make the appointment at the next meeting. But I'm recommending that Edna Holloway take the position temporarily. I would agree with that. Okay. So we'll put it on for appointment uh, December 4th. Excuse me, did you say temporary? Chris is done December yeah. 21st. Yeah. So yeah. Wait December 21st for the election. Uh -huh. We need an intro. And then from and then she'll continue afterwards. Well, it depends on the election. Oh. And it's a temporary appointment, so yeah. it could be, uh, if it became a permanent appointed, it doesn't necessarily guarantee okay, right, right. this no, individual. No, it, once it becomes yeah. permanent, it has to be, if it's an appointed position, right. town election will determine that. Or if someone can run that. for the yeah. election mm -hmm. position right. as well, yeah. which could be interesting. Mm -hmm. It may be an invalidated well, because election if it's... Supported. Well, council has already okay. advised us on how to handle that. I mean, if you have someone appointed and the town votes to go with the appointed and you've got someone elected, the elected person will only stay in office until the board makes a permanent appointment. Which could be could be anybody. A month, mm -hmm. two months, whatever. So it's covered mm -hmm. both ways. Mm -hmm. 
is that possibility of three people in a short amount of time saying yeah. Mrs. Holloway is only until May, she runs or doesn't run, and somebody else runs, that person gets in, let's say it gets, it passes to get appointed, and then you, appoint somebody you can else. appoint someone. So. Right. And this, this meeting, this webinar on Wednesday talks about this. Yeah. Yeah. We have one candidate for accountant. Very good, but the problem is she cannot give us the time in the office that we need somebody here. We're doing remote now. I don't think it's going to help us to do remote. It's on a full side. We need somebody here in the building. So as, as good as she is, um, can't meet the hours. So we'll continue with the ad and keep it out there. From continual. We can get a part time job. I'm not interested. <laughs> town of Oakham is a great it's like, town. <laughs> I know. It's the ball of some of those jobs. No way. <laughs> I, I agree with that assessment. Yeah. About that, that candidate. There's a lot involved mm -hmm. in both jobs. Very, very key positions. Very key, yes. Uh, Tiffany um, asked a, an additional question um, and um, is unable to unmute, and that could be me. Um, would we also be able to apply to the fund, I believe the ARPA fund, to get a piece of playground equipment? The playground is not, the school playground is not accessible for all students. And I think um, if we did it on right field, um, I think that would be a, a recommend, a request, a proposal um, for ARPA funds. Right now we have a swing set. So if a resident said, could we do a, I guess you can't do seesaws anymore, but um, the, what's the ring? We should, right, merry go on we should definitely do the metal merry-go-round. Um, <laughs> but, um, Tiffany, I think that would be um, as part of like a, rec a request, um, a proposal to the board. Anything, anything else in school, we have to look into that. Other old business, Lucy. Nope, I'm done. I'm done. Okay. All right. And we'll move that we move into executive session, chapter 38, section 21 dash 2. Contract negotiation with the annual personnel. Still walk. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. I um, second that. Or I move that. Aaron? Yes. 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 Thanks. I just couldn't understand what you said. Thank you. Bye, you too. Oh, Lucy. Okay. Good night. Lucy's going into executive session. Okay. 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 So I'm going to um, mute, stop the video, um, stop the recording, um, and then we'll come back. We'll turn it all back on once we're back out of executive session. Good night, guys. Board of Selectmen are back in open session, November 27th. It is now 9.30 p.m. Let's take a motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned.